I want to show you how you can carve a scoop. You've got your chickens in the chicken coop. You've got a bag full of seed feed and you're going to take it, put it in a bowl. You make a scoop like this, very quick and simple. And um, this is one I just made out of a piece of two by three or three by two, depending on which continent you live on. I've got a scrap here. It's just a, an upcycle I'm going to do with it. So I'm going to cut off a chunk off here like this. Just, I'm going to keep it longer than I actually need. And you can use any, any wood you want to for this. Any wood at all. It, wo it will work just about any wood. But of course if you get the wood that's too hard it could be a bit more problematic. I want to put this shape onto here, so I usually just take a piece of uh, cardboard, make a fold down the length very easily, like this. And then I want this about half the width of here, so I'm going to put a mark on here. That's the center. You can eyeball the center and then make a line here like this. And then just mark whatever length you want. You want to go parallel here for a while, bring it into about maybe half an inch like I have done there and make your shape, whatever shape you want like this. And then cut that out. You can use a knife or a pair of scissors like this. Very quickly, you're working with your children, your grandchildren. They are going to be amazed when you open this up and you have a template to draw around for the shape of your scoop on that center line. Now you can draw around here and you know then. So let me plane off this surface just to make it a little bit clearer for you. Just get rid of this paint from the last use. This the same as this one? This is, I just freehanded that one. This one's a little bit bigger. I'm going to go with the smaller one because that's the same as this scoop and I want to replicate that one. So anywhere on here, just trace around your shape here. Not exact. You don't have to worry about this because you'll be shaping this by eye as well when you come to the final decisions of the shape. There's my shape outlined. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scallop this out while I have it clampable in the vise, clampable on the bench top, clampable on a picnic table, on a kitchen table. We're going to just take a gouge here, take out the middle here. Now you can just scallop like this, or you could take the gouge if it's good and sharp, and you can use all your upper body. Kids will obviously have to be supervised. I'm just leaving on the wings. Scalloping out the inside of my scoop here till I'm down into the bottom, then long pairing cups from the top of the arc here down into the bottom. Nice and deep if you want it deep, you could go shallow like this. But uh, upper body strength has a lot to do with how I'm doing mine. You may have to use a mallet. Look what we got in a very short space of time. Good sharp gouge like this, number seven, something like that. You could go with a, a deeper bowl on it. So once you've got that, you can refine these top of your, your just by tightening up on your gouge here, tighten up on this inner side here, and refine your cut 
just till you feel satisfied that this is looking as beautiful as you can get it. And that's how I would do mine. Now I might put a separate feature on here. I could come in here and just pop that with my hand and put a little feature in the middle like that. I like that, that's what I might do. That would be a signature of my piece. Now the remainder I have to take off here and the sides, I think I would probably go with a bow saw, but you could use a regular hand saw. A bow saw like this works very well. And I'm gonna leave this quite thick. Take off the bulk of the waste. This side the same. And I'll show you in a minute what I've left on there. So I'm just flexing the blade here just to give me a little bit more depth, not too much. I'm not trying to get the whole of the shape, but you can see why I took those corners off. Can you see what we got there? A little diagonal on each corner. So now we can take off some of this outside corner here, a little bit. This probably will split off there. Same on this one here. I'm gonna go down here. Nothing exact about this at the moment. Just got some of the material out of the way here. So now I have, the reason I took the corners off is because the cut's narrower. You can see if I'd left them on, I would have to go through three inches. This just makes it a lot simpler. So here, down here, down to the depth of my saw, take some of this out here. All right, so now we're getting the roughed out shape. So I'm gonna go down these walls here now, like this and like this. So I'm gonna take off this end here and get some of that meat out of the way. we can deal with the excess on here. Let me just darken this just so you can see a bit more where I'm going. Like this. So I'm leaving these outside wings on. If I had gone too near there, I'd just plane this off and thicken it up again if I had, if I wanted to. But there's part of my shape. Now what do I do? I can put this in the vise here, but I have to be a bit more careful because I've got the, the outside wings down at the bottom will be more fragile now. I can saw down here, like this. Down the long curve and flexing the blade as much as it will allow me, like this. So this is my tension stick, just catching a little bit there. See what we've got there? So we can come from this side, or I can just bring it a little bit further up the vise there, just so I don't catch my tabletop, my bench top. There we go. Oh, the other way would be to put this in the vise, 
take some cuts across the grain here. are lovely things I think I love the scoop so I've got my cut down to that line and now I can do a series of stop cuts here with a one inch chisel or oh, I could even use the gouge that I was using before I could go down here with the self tame tool like this keep going One, I can still get that one and then I come from this end here or oh, I was going to show you can use a one inch chisel with the bevel down take off the waste this way and use the bevel the same way you did the gouge just ride that bevel and down to your depth line like this, like that. You could take this back off here if it's in the way. So we're getting down to our shape. Now we've got this part to do, and this is where it can be a little awkward to hold. I want to put a little bit of shape in here, so I'm gonna come down here, and this is where it gets awkward to hold, because we're losing that ability, so. Just in here, as best you can. And we take a chisel hammer. Creeping up to my line. Just clamp it as best you can. Still an awkward shape now. So I'm close. Now here, I, might, I want to come down here to cut this. I can't put this in the vise because this is going to be too weak here like this. So I can't do that. So what do I do? I've got to work this out. I can still grip on here, I think, especially if I square up this end a little bit here like this. Square this up just a little bit like that and put this in the vise here. And then I can saw down, I think I can. my goal. So now I'm going to go in the vise this way where I can, I can still clamp this quite comfortably. Take off some of that high bulk stuff here. So instead of taking a full width cut I'm going to take off the corners here like this. You just have to work it out because it is going to be different with different shapes a scoop. So get the outside line refined. Then you can take off these middle bits here. Of course, you could cut this on the bandsaw too.
So I'm near my shape here. I just have a couple of hard corners here to get rid of. Read the grain. That's what this exercise is really mostly about, is you reading the grain. Watch your grain here, especially here. So I'm just taking the bulk off with my flat chisel here. Just to get the, the hard corners down a little bit. So. Then I go with my spoke shave. This is when I start to use just a flat bottom spoke shave. This will work fine. These out of the way, make sure you're working safely. Pull, push, it doesn't matter which way you go. If you're going against the grain, just turn it around. Well, look on your end here for your thickness. You're going to keep the main body quite thick. I'm going to keep it quarter of an inch thick, I think. So you can see I've got my shape coming a little bit thick here. So I'm going to take that off. What I've got, this is a different kind of a spoke. So this is what they call um, a 51. This, this has no adjustments on here. So what I do is I usually just tap this with a steel hammer to get my depth. So I've got this side, you can see here, listen quite thick, this side quite thin. So I use this side to take off the bulk like this to get my shape. Then I move to this side to refine, oops, to refine the cut with a shallower cut. So here I'm using the thick side Turn it around now, see if you can see this a little bit better from there. So I'm going in this shoulder area here. Take off the heavy cuts down to my line and then take out the shoulder a little bit just to refine it. This is actual, actually quite functional already as a scoop. But it doesn't look pretty yet. So we're getting there. We've got to take a little bit more out of this shoulder. Let's see if we can do this so you can see it. So here, can you see this spoke shave taking down the high spot like that? And if I come to this side, you can still see. So I can use this Take out the hard, heavy corners, then refine it. Take out my paint from the last painted project. Now here, on this leading edge here, this is too thick to go into the grain. So I'm going to take off the back edge here. Like this, around here. Keeping the strength, I want the strength, but I take this down and give myself a bit of a lead in to that grain bucket when I'm feeding the chickens. Like that, so you can see the contrast now. So I've got this thinner, I've got a bevel on the back edge, and I've got to take this side down here. See if I can do this where you can see it. So I take off the hard corner by short uh, pull strokes here. 
but you can push too. So this is my coarse side of my spoke shave iron. Like that. And then I'm taking the shallow strokes here just to feather into the long underside of the scoop. That's probably as close as I'm going to get to that edge and maintain the integrity I want. Like that. So I've got the main body, I've got the back shape. I just have the handle to do a little bit more awkward, so go carefully down here. You don't want to split this now, you've got this much work in it. Take off the hard corners like this, just like peeling potatoes really. Here, same again, let me see if I can go this way. No, I can't go that way because I'm going against the grain. The grain is going to tell you which way to pull and push your spoke shave. So just be sensitive to it. Now I'm looking on the end here to see, to check my the profile, see if the profile is what I want. Turn it around, down into the vise. I can't put too much pressure on. So I work around the hard corners to remove any grain, any uh, surface texture I don't want, like from the bow saw. I'm taking that out right now. Take the paint out as well. I don't need paint in here. And then I'll start to feel it and see how it feels in my hand. And that's how we make a fairly traditional taking out the saw curves now. So I'm going in one direction here. I can go this direction down in the valley, but this side I have to pull up to go with the grain. So now I'm getting the shape I want. I just have this internal corner here to start to get here. So I'm going to go with a, a round bottom spoke shave here. And I'm using my belly. This is relaxed muscle. So this keeps the piece of wood in place here. Children won't have that usually. It takes a few years to develop. So I'm pivoting that on my stomach. I can go quite heavy on this, on the handle. So this is a round bottom and it gets me a little bit tighter into the corners where I want to be. And the remainder of this, I would probably, if I wanted it super smooth and I didn't want any tooling marks in here, I would probably go with the um, sandpaper. Now in some camps that's a no-no, so you may want to go with a scraper too, that works as well. Here's a scraper. So you can use this to refine the handle, take shavings off. Get down into the wood. And that's basically how I would get to I've got this little thing here. This is just a piece of sandpaper to a piece of wood. But you can now go in here and hand hold this, use a rasp like this, and take off anything you don't want in that handle. This is a fairly expensive rasp, and so I always have an alternative for you and that's why I came up with this. It's just a piece of
coarse sandpaper, 120 grit, glued to a little paddle here. And this gets me very similar to the rasp. It's affordable, it's very inexpensive. And you can shape them, you can put a hollow on this piece of wood, you could make this round so you can get inside to these internal corners. Whereas this rasp has a flat side and a round side, it's ready to go. So shape out the handle. Uh, work with the grain with it if you need to. I can use the round side on the inside of this cove here. Down here, like this. So that's how I would make a scoop for my everyday work, for my feeding my chickens. Some sandpaper on the inner areas, just your fingertips will get the round hollows nicely. Go from 120 or 150 grit to your more refined 240, 250, something like that and sand it out. And that's really how you get from there to there and you've got your scoop for your chickens. Thank you.